So I'm going to give you five things you can do today <clears throat> that will help you to grow faster because it will improve your skills. Skills are one of the most important components. Desire is critical, right? You have to have a strong and burning desire to be successful. That, that you're going to need, right? But you're also going to need some skills. You're going to need things like uh, be, be, being organized. You're going to need things like sales skills. You're going to need marketing skills. You're going to need the ability to hire people. You know, you're going to need some basic financial skills like for cash management. You're going to need some of these fundamental skills in order to become a successful entrepreneur or what I call a freightpreneur, okay? And so ultimately, <clears throat> the way you develop those skills is the, the, the five ways that I developed my skills were one, early on, I started with books, right? I became an entrepreneur back in... 1994, I think was my first business, 1994. So that's 26 years ago. The internet really didn't exist. You know, none of these things really existed. So I started with books, right? So I would buy a lot of books. I would read a lot of books. You can see here in my bookshelf, this is a small uh, display of some of the books. I have literally boxes of more books. Many of them I give away to people because I've already read them a bunch of times. So books are a great resource to learn and understand and develop your skills. For example, if you, one of the people that I leaned on heavily that was a mentor for me from a book perspective for sales was Jeffrey Gittimer. Jeffrey Gittimer is a really well-known sales author, trainer, coach, speaker. And so, you know, I, I read all of his material as well as a bunch of other, you know, Zig Ziglar and, and a whole bunch of other guys that I, that I have read all their books. And I continue to read new sales books today. As sales books come out, you'll see there's books up here from the last several years that are sales related that I continue to read. And so I educate myself using books. Now, today, I'm more likely to do an audible or an audio book, like a, a, a book that you listen to on your, through your iPhone or through your car or through your TV these days. You can even listen to things on your TV. So ultimately, I'm big on books, right? And it's very specific to the skill that I want to develop. If it's sales related, marketing related, um, growth related, strategy related, hiring related, leadership related, whatever it is, books are a fantastic resource. I have a tendency to lean on audio books these days. So Audible and Amazon are a great resource for that. So that's number one, books. You need to um, invest in learning and developing your skills with books. The second place to go are blogs. Now, there are blogs on almost every topic you can possibly imagine, okay? If you were to go online and search for sales blog, marketing blog, freight broker blog, uh, you know, whatever niche or whatever skill or whatever you want to search for, there's a blog for it. And as long as you, you know, evaluate the source of your material, not, not everything you read online is accurate. Not everything you read online is the truth. And not everything you read online should be a part of your business or will help you to develop your skills. So if you focus in on people that have a strong reputation who have already done the things that you're looking to do and you follow them through their blog, right? Or uh, kind of an offshoot to the blog is the podcast. So we'll call blog and podcast separately, right? So those of you that know me know that I have a growth experts podcast, which is kind of taking place in my blog, the writing. So I do a weekly, I do two podcasts a week on growth experts. You can listen to them at wherever you get your podcast on, whether you're on Google podcast or your iPhone user and using iOS, you know, podcasts are another great place. So blogs and podcasts are a great way and a great place to continue to hone and develop your skills. And again, they are very specific to whatever it is you're trying to learn or to understand. Okay. And so first was books. Second was blogs and podcasts. The third is finding a mentor or a coach. Okay, so finding a mentor or a coach specific to that skill set that you're looking for. So if you're looking for somebody who's very, if you're looking to develop your skill in sales, you need to find somebody who has proven 
to have that skill and has done it at a very high level. And then you can, they can be your mentor from afar or they could, you can hire them to become your mentor or your coach, right? I've done both. I've done both in my career, right? And so all these things I've done, books, blogs, podcasts, coaching and mentors, these are all resources that I've drawn from to develop my skills and to enhance the opportunity to grow my businesses faster, okay? And so the, the another one is learning, this is one that most people don't think about, is learning and researching your competitors, okay? Now, there are over 15,000 freight brokers in the United States, right? active licensed freight brokers in the United States. I don't have an exact number, but let's call it over 15,000. That's not very many when you consider the amount of freight that's out there. And you consider that the average freight broker does less than $5 million in sales. So they're pretty small. And so ultimately, you know, there are competitors out there that you can learn from. You can learn from anybody. Your competitors, for example, there are large competitors out there that have been very successful at growing their business to 50 or 100 or 200 or a half a billion or even a billion dollars plus in revenue. And you can learn from those larger competitors because they've went through what you're doing and they've done the research and they've done the tests and they understand their market, their target market, and they understand the language and they understand the messaging and they understand the needs of their customers better than most startups. And so you can learn from them. You can learn from C.H. Robinson. You can learn from TQL. You can learn from Coyote. You can learn from XBO. You can learn from all of these brokers, these big brokers, or even smaller brokers. Maybe you're doing 10 or 20 or $30 million a year. You can learn from your competitors and all you have to do is research them. The greatest part about where we are today in business is that we have the internet. And it's at our disposal. Not only do we have it on our computer, but we have it right here. We have the equivalent of having some crazy computer in our hands. You can research and access information about your competitors very, very simply. You can understand how they're getting their customers. You can understand you know, how they're positioning them themselves and what niches they're going after. You can understand the messaging that they're using in their marketing to attract customers. You can understand how they're hiring, who they're hiring, where they're hiring, how much they're paying. I mean, there's so much market intelligence available by understanding your competitors and by following your competitors. So that's another great resource. Okay. And then the last one that I'm going to implore you to leverage is practice. So knowledge is potential power. I didn't coin that, right? That's a Tony Robbins phrase. Knowledge is potential power. But putting that knowledge to work and taking action, that's really the power. So when you learn something, you have to deploy it. You have to execute on it. You have to put it to work, right? A lot of people will study, 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 which has value, but then they'll never take action and put it to work. One of the differences with me is that when I find something and I learn something new and I I implement it. One of the first things I want to do is implement and test it. Now, that sometimes creates a little bit of failure. That sometimes creates a little bit of frustration, but that's how we learn. That's how we evolve. That's how we determine um, what the next step is. And so practice is the next thing. You have to put it to work, right? And you can't just do it once. You can't just do it twice. You can't just do it three times. You have to do it and do it and do it and do it. For those of you that know me know that I've been doing judo. Uh, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an instructor in judo. I'm a second degree black belt. I've been doing judo for, Jesus, like 30 years. Okay. So a long time. I think 1990 is when I started, 90 or 91. So about 30 years I've been doing judo. I'm an instructor. I've been a competitor for many years in my earlier age, not as much now. But um, one of the things with judo is, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things that the, you can't, practice it in theory. You can watch videos of other people that are doing a specific technique like a throw or a hold down or an arm lock or a choke, which are all part of judo. 
But until you try to implement and execute that, you never know exactly how it's going to go. And so, you know, I, again, that's another reason probably why I've progressed in martial arts is because you learn and then you apply that learning. And so I'm a big believer in this. I gave you a bunch of resources like books, you know, and audio books and physical books and blogs and podcasts and coaching and your competitors. Those are all great resources to learn. But then the most valuable part of learning is applying and executing that knowledge, that strategy, that technique, and you have to apply it to your business. Now, you can't do everything at once. So you will have to pick and you will have to focus. What I strongly suggest for you as a startup freight broker, if you're brand new to the business or you're just getting started, let's say you're doing less than a million dollars in sales, okay? Which is where probably 98% of you listening to this are. My suggestion is you put a very heavy focus into sales and marketing. Those are the two skills okay, that are probably going to pay you the most, right? And are going to have the biggest impact on your business. So learning the fundamentals of sales. Now I've spent a lot of time talking about sales. I've done a ton of training around sales and I will continue to provide content and training around sales. I've done a bunch of content and training around marketing and I will continue to do that, but I'm not the only resource for you. You should find other resources as well. Now, I'm not telling you to tune, not tune in every Monday to these freight broker lives because I think they're valuable. I talk about things that are very relevant. I talk about things that I've actually done. I don't pontificate. I'm not giving you theory. These are things that I've done and practiced in my life and I've had results from, or I share the mistakes I've made. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you found value with this, but the key is you have to invest in yourself. You have to invest in learning. You have to invest in personal development. And then when you learn something new, you have to put it to work. You have to apply and execute. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Just to give you a quick heads up again, if you're curious about becoming a freight broker or a freight agent, and for whatever reason, you're just sitting on the fence, right? Understand, I promise we will take care of you. Go to FreightBrokerBootCamp.com, enroll. We offer a 60-day, 100% money-back guarantee. If you're not happy, just send us a message. We'll refund your money. We've had over 8,000 satisfied students, and we've been in business for over a decade. This is all the things that I wanted to know before I started my freight brokerage back in 2003. So I hope you guys take me up on that offer. Check out FreightBrokerBootCamp.com.